Today's video story is called The Field Mouse and Dinosaur Named Sue. And look what I've got here on my finger. It's a little mouse puppet who's going to help me read the story. This is a story written by Jan Wall, illustrated by Bob Duchette. The Field Mouse and the Dinosaur Named Sue. Yeah, you're right. My name is Sue, isn't it? So I kind of like this dinosaur. Early one morning, Field Mouse heard strange noises outside his burrow. Some loud, some soft. Scritch, scratch, chip and bang. His house had a roof made of an old bone. Field Mice, Mouse peered out into the hot day. People with shovels, scrapers, and picks dug into the bluff above. Carefully, slowly. Oh my, cried a young woman. Look at this beautiful thing. She showed the others a bone, like his roof. Old bones lay all over the place. They were no good for chewing on. They were like rock. In fact, they were rock. That day and the next and the next and the next, the diggers kept digging. Field Mouse had to see what was happening. In the afternoon, she wished to take a nap. She scurried back to her home, the home he had known his whole life. When he got there, he saw a terrible sight. His burrow was torn open. The roof was gone. They took my bone away. Now I must find it, he decided. Packing boxes laid here and there. Old, old bones were wrapped in burlap and placed gently in wooden boxes. A worker put a cheese sandwich down on the ledge of the box. The cheese sandwich fell in. Field Mouse thought his bone might be in that box too. He climbed in. He sniffed and poked. He could not find his roof. Suddenly, a lid was put on the box. It grew black as pitch. The box was lifted onto the truck, and the truck drove off. At first, Field Mouse laid on the sandwich. His stomach rumbled from hunger. It kept him awake. The cheese smelled wonderful. Well, he decided, I'll try eating this. It was wonderful. But he missed his home. The box was taken to a place called Chicago, where they had a huge building. The building was called the Field Museum. The box was put on a shelf in a cool place in a special room. One morning, the lid on the box was opened. Field Mouse jumped out. On tables lay more bits and pieces of old bone, some large, some small. A man was studying them and didn't see him. Field Mouse looked and looked for his roof. He flicked his tail and ran when he heard the voices. Sue, mumble, mumble, said one. Sue, mumble, mumble, said another. What is Sue, wondered the mouse. He squeezed through an opening in the wall and out of the room. He scampered up onto a ledge, searching for his bone. He saw something so tall it reached the sky of the hall. It was the field mouse's first dinosaur. It had no skin or fur. Down below him, people gazed at the critter. They were small as insects. He grew dizzy and felt lost. Field Mouse hid until nighttime. Then he crawled up to a window. 
Beyond, many lights of the city twinkled. Far off was a lake. It made him thirsty. He found water in a paper cup someone left on the floor. He tipped it over and drank. When visitors were gone, Field Mouse was free to roam. He saw colors through glass windows. He didn't know it, but he was looking at Chicago as it was 410 million years ago. There were plants, corals, snails, and shells. He scratched to get in. Field Mouse soon grew tired and pushed himself into a small space in the wall. There it was dark and he could close his eyes and remember home. When he woke, he saw a man polishing the floor with a machine that whirred loudly and spun. Field Mouse almost got pulled into it. He wiggled and jumped. He raced down the length of the hall and passed two elephants. He ran and ran until his legs wouldn't go anymore. And then he collapsed in the corner and fell asleep. In daytime, if no visitors were near, Field Mouse crawled up and peered into the special place where people seemed very, very busy. They scraped at the bones, big and little, or poured plaster on others. They were as careful as the diggers who found the bones had been. They looked odd because they wore masks. Dust flew in the air, and they took tiny stones away from the old bones. There was a lot to explore. Every room was different and he found more people working on bones. Maybe one of the bones was his roof. He kept searching. Mostly Field Mouse hid behind the walls. It was best to just come out at night. He learned to tunnel from one room to another squeezing into the tiniest cracks. One day he entered a great high room with plants as big as trees, giant dragonflies big as birds. This was Chicago, 300 million years ago. He sniffed and sniffed. Nothing was real, nothing to nibble on. He missed his bone. Field Mouse felt he would never find his bone. There are so many strange creatures all around him. He liked to look at the Dinonatron. His eyes were empty holes but seemed to be stand, staring at him. He began to explore the Apatosaurus. Its tail alone was 30 feet. The critter became his friends. They had so many bones. Field Mouse thought Triceratops was scary. Did these critters have fur like him? Or were they lizards? Field Mouse found it was fun to climb on their backs and to slide down onto the floor. He took naps where he could, but he wished he had a cozy spot of his own. One day to his surprise, the giant critter in the great hall was gone. Men and women kept going back and forth. They were putting up something to keep the crowds away. Field Mouse still had not found a home. To cheer himself up, he went to the cafe. He found a scrap of tasty, excellent cake. He was hearing, Sue this, Sue that. His ears rang with the word Sue. What was it? Then one morning, there it was, all put together, the Sioux they had been talking about, the biggest T-Rex in the world. She was 67 million years old. Of course, he didn't know that. A lot of people stood in front admiring her. She had a particularly short, stubby arms. 
Poor thing, thought Field Mouse. How ever did she pick up cheese? Later that night, the hall lay empty, except for Sue and the field mouse. He walked up to each foot, climbed on the toes, and crawled up a leg. Slowly, he came down, searching. In coming down, he stopped in the middle of another foot. His bone, his very own home. He chattered to Sue. She kept silent. Under his bone, it was dark and cool and safe a fine place for a secret nest. He made it with bits of paper, smooth and round. Maybe Sue had been a terrible, angry hunter once, crashing through forests of tall magnolia or oak trees, but now she was quiet and gentle. Field Mouse was sure she was singing a soft song. Under the foot he laid and he dreamed a happy dream. He was home. And that is the true story of Sue. Everything in this is true except for the mouse. The mouse is just a friend to tell the story. But there was a woman, and um, let's see if I can find her name. Her name was Sue Hendrickson. She was out hiking with her dog one day in um, South Dakota, I think it was. And um, she found some bone in the rock, and she chipped out all the bone. It took many years. And she had the most complete skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus Rex ever found. And she was so big, it took so long to haul everything to Chicago. And the head was so heavy, because most of the bones were there, that they had to put make a fake head to put onto the dinosaur. And they have the real head on a special table of its own. If you go to Chicago to the Natural um, History Museum, of science and dinosaurs, you can see the real Tyrannosaurus Rex named Sue. That is a real story. I went there a couple of years ago and I got to see it and have my picture taken with her. So she is a, a real skeleton.